Hi. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, for this webinar. Uh, let's give a few minutes for other people so that they can join. Uh, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where we are. Uh, thank you for those who have already joined us in this webinar. My name is uh, Wamor Sandrine. I am a data scientist at uh, the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda, and uh, I'll be the moderator for today. Uh, before we start, please take note of the following uh, housekeeping logistics. Uh, first, uh, if you have any technical issue during the discussion today, please share them via, uh, via the chat and uh, a member of our team uh, will try to help you. Uh, we ask you for patience to allow for some delays that uh, took place. Secondly, we invite you to participate in our discussion by sharing any question or comments with uh, the panelists through the chat window. Uh, it will be enabled uh, shortly. Uh, then you will be typing your message in the chat box. You can also ask uh, the floor to share your country experience and uh, ask any question. Uh, finally, this webinar is being recorded and uh, the recording will be shared on the event page with uh, the presentation. Without uh, further ado, allow me to give the floor to Mr. Oliver Chinganya for his welcome remarks. Uh, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, one minute, thank you. Just one minute. There's a problem with the screen. I... Yes, just something is strange here. Just give me one minute. Uh, I can't even there. Uh, just one minute, please. Okay. Are you able to hear me though? And you're able to see me? Yes, we do. Yeah, because for some reason the screen is not showing from my end. Anyway, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening, depending on uh, where you are, as the moderator has already indicated. Uh, if I may refer to all of us that are here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning again. I want to welcome you to the Start Talk um, Africa the webinar series, which is the first part of the generative artificial intelligence application in economic uh, economics and statistics. I'm delighted, uh, you know, uh, to see it's such a diverse group of professionals from various national statistics offices, internal, international organizations that are joined here, the academic institutions, and the private sector uh, being with us uh, this morning. Uh, this series is part of the monthly Stats Talk Africa webinars, an initiative by the Africa Center for Statistics uh, within the UN Economic Commission for Africa, which is aimed at fostering dialogue and knowledge uh, exchange on data and statistics as well as innovative tools. The generative uh, artificial intelligence is revolutionizing multiple sectors by creating new content of such as uh, texts, images, uh, music, and code based on patterns learned from existing data. Unlike traditional artificial intelligence, which is primarily recognizes patterns and makes predictions, 
generative artificial intelligence models generate novel outputs, making them incredible, versatile, and powerful. This webinar series will focus uh, mainly on the practical applications of the texting uh, generating artificial intelligence, particularly retrieval argumented uh, generation, which combines the strength of generative uh, models with robust information retrieval systems. Our discussions today will strongly align with the ECS strategy for the transformation and modernizing of official statistics in Africa. The roadmap uh, for this transformation spans from 2023 to 2030 and is designed to guide national statistical systems in meeting the needs of statistical users sustainably and efficiently. It aims to optimize the process of transforming and modernizing these systems, which is crucial for supporting the overall sustainable development of Africa and achieving the goals uh, established under the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, as well as the Africa we want, which is Agenda 2063. Now, Genetic um, artificial intel intelligence really plays a significant role in this transformation. And here are some of the examples, just to share some of the examples. One, uh, large language models as virtual tutors. The Africa Center for Statistics has pioneered the use of large language models as virtual tutors for training in the systems of national accounts and the system of economic environmental accounting. This innovative application enhances training and capacity building, making learning more accessible and efficient. Two, retrieval augmented generation of data query. This using a retrieval augmented generation of data query simplifies access, accessing relevant data by enabling natural language queries. This approach is being utilized to query data availability and data sources from national accounts, websites, making the process more user-friendly and efficient. And three, extracting, extracting statistical data from complex doc documents. Here, what we are trying to say is the generative artificial intelligence is employed to extract statistical data from complex uh, documents, such as sustainable development goals reports. This application demonstrates artificial intelligence the capability to handle intricate and voluminous information, ensuring accurate and comprehensive data extraction. So participants, today what we are going to do is to delve into some of the current and ongoing projects at ECA that leverage these artificial intelligence capabilities. Our colleague uh, Yusuf Isudu Asada, uh, a statistician at Africa Center for Statistics, will present these projects and their applications in economics and as well as in statistics. The current state of official statistics in Africa presents both challenges and opportunities, as we all know. Many African countries have made significant strides in transforming and modernizing their statistical systems, particularly through the application of digital technology. However, emerging factors such as the increasing demand for digital data and technology and the growing number of stakeholders necessitate further transformation and modernization. The roadmap therefore outlines several uh, priorities to guide this process on focusing particularly enhancing the use of government-held administrative data and new forms of digital data, Two, optimizing survey and census methodologies. Three, uh, ensuring that public services are increasingly digitalized to meet the user expectations. And therefore, implementing this roadmap requires a collaborative effort. And this is why we are here today, so that we can work together. The Africa Center for Statistics, along with various national statistics offices, regional bodies, and international partners, will play a crucial role in this endeavor. We must ensure that our national statistical systems are innovative, resilient, efficient and agile, as well as capable of leveraging digital technology and other tools. As we move forward, I would like to urge all participants today to actively engage in today's discussion, as already said by the moderator, share experiences, and explore how generative artificial intelligence can be integrated into our work. By fostering collaboration and knowledge sharing, we can drive innovative and harness the full potential of generative artificial intelligence to transform economic and statistical practice across the continent. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, today's seminar is not just an introduction to generative artificial intelligence applications in economics and in statistics, but a call for action to using modern approaches, and this is just one of them. Let us embrace these innovative tools and strategies to accelerate progress towards achieving the sustainable development goals and uh, and support the transformative transformation and mod modernization of visual statistics in the continent. So again, I want to thank you for joining us today on this very, very important discussion. 
And I'm looking forward to really hearing much more on this insightful presentation, your own engagement and discussions that are going to follow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director. Uh, thank you for giving us uh, an overview on the use of generative AI. Uh, today we have one presentation that we focus on three main areas. The first one is uh, the large language models as a virtual tutor for online training courses on the system of national accounts and uh, the system of economic environmental accounting. Second, uh, the second area is the retrieval augmented generation for data querying, which is used to query data availability and data sources uh, from national accounts website using national language. Uh, the third area that we'll be hearing from is, uh, is about extracting structured information such as statistical uh, data from complex uh, document for research purpose. This will be presented by Mr. Isufu Seydou Sanda, who is a statistician at uh, the African Center uh, for Statistics at ECA. Uh, Mr. Isufu has more than 20 years of experience uh, at uh, the United Nations Secretariat, working on the national accounts, environmental accounting, uh, labor statistics, trade and uh, tourism statistics, the Beyond GDP agenda, and uh, providing statistical uh, support for the economic studies. Recently, he has been focusing on the economic and the statistical uh, application of uh, the artificial intelligence. He is currently working on the fine tuning and the adapting uh, large language models and uh, other data science emerging tools for economic, social, statistic, uh, statistical application. Uh, such as economic modeling, uh, forecasting, information retrieval, and uh, information extraction. Uh, extraction. Uh, Mr. Yusufu, thank you for sharing with us uh, your experience. You will have the floor for uh, 50 minutes. Uh, over to you if you are ready, sir. Uh, thank you, moderator. Thank you, director. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So I have shared my screen. I hope it is visible. Do you see my screen? Yeah, we see a screen. OK, so the presentation that we are going to make today is mostly based on a work that we have been doing at the African Center for Statistics, where we are trying to use artificial intelligence to improve training on system of national account and the system of economic and environmental accounting. So part of the slide are from a presentation that we have done at the last uh, International Statistical Institute uh, conference in Mexico. So we have presented the application there and here we are taking the opportunity to improve it and then to present it also to you and to discuss with you. So when we talk about generating AI, it's a really a very large field, and I don't think in one webinar we'll be able to cover all what it encompasses, but we are trying to focus on the few applications that we have been doing as a African Center for Statistics, and maybe if there are some people who have been using generative AI in statistics, we can discuss, maybe you will give us your ideas on how to improve. So let's start by the, what do we mean by generative AI? So generative AI is a class of artificial intelligence models that generate new content, such as text, image, audio, and video by learning from existing data. So if you remember uh, the way it goes, we used to have this traditional uh, statistical model where we have some data as inputs and we do some regression to find the regularities and then we can extract trend, we can make projection, and so on. So these all the models, the first uh, generation of machine learning model are some kind of extension of this approach, where you have a lot of data, maybe it is text, maybe it is video, maybe it is audio or image, then you are going to find the regularities in the data, and then based on this regularity, you can do a classification task, you can do a regression task, or you can do identification of uh, people and so on and so on. 
But recently, there are some new models that we call generative AI that are really mind blowing because this one, they are really able to generate image, text, audio, and video by learning. So the idea is that you can take uh, 10,000, 100,000 images, then you feed it into an artificial intelligence. And with each image, you can put uh, a caption. When you say this is an image of a cat on the beach, this is an image of a dog in the forest, this is an image of a person in an office. So you have this labeled data, and then you can put it into an artificial intelligence, then it is going to learn how to generate the image and how to associate the image with the caption. So once you have finished the learning, you can say, okay, now that you have learned what are image and what is a label, can you give me an image of a horse in the sun, for example? And, and then it will be able to generate it. And it is so realistic that it's really mind blowing. So we have seen this kind of application appearing from text to image. Then there is text to video, there's also text to music and so on and so on that are really astonishing. For example, uh, the latest text to video, you can literally write a script and say, produce a video that is going with my script and the video are very realistic as the model are being better and better. So this is what generative AI is. It generates new content. It is not just looking at all the content and identifying the pattern, but it generates new content. So if you have 10,000 reports from African Center of Statistics, you can ask it to generate a new report for the African Center of Statistics, and you can even give more information. I want the report to be about this activity and so on and so on. So this is the strength of generative AI. Here, for example, you will see the Google AE text to video, which is a good example of generative AI. You see the kind of image that is, it is capable of generating based on a prompt. So give me the picture of a panda playing music. The artificial intelligence is capable of doing this. It is fun, but it has also lots of application, and particularly in economic and statistics, we can find uh, ways of using it to improve our work. So one example is uh, data augmentation. Because generative AI can learn the structure of data and generate similar data, you can use it to create synthetic data set. For example, when you are looking at uh, mobile telephony data, Generally, they are very difficult to obtain because there are all restriction on confidentiality and so on and so on. But if you can train a generative AI to learn the pattern of mobile application data, then you can ask the artificial intelligence to generate fake mobile data. The data are fake, but they have the same distribution as a real data. So you can use them to do some training of your mobile application algorithm and so on and so on. And this is very powerful. You can also use them to do forecasting and predictive modeling because you can ask the generative AI to produce scenario and forecast. So in this case, we are not asking it to generate image, but for example, we are asking it to learn the economic account of a country. So you have learned the economic account of a country or maybe for 100 countries for 20 years. And based on it, I would like for you to generate the supply and use table of a country that is a coastal country that has a population of 10 million, that is mostly exporting agricultural product and so on and so on. And then it is going to generate it. It is not a real economy, but it is going to generate tables for this economy that are very realistic. And then you can use this table for doing your research and so on and so on. So you see how powerful it is. You can also use it for natural language processing. So you can uh, summarize text. This is a case of GPT, where you have a large volume of economic reports, and then you want to summarize them, or you want to research papers, and you want to extract what is important. There are many applications of generative AI for academic research now. There are some uh, websites where you can go. It is an academic AI, where you can put a topic, and it is it will go through all the publication and we'll find the relevant uh, extract from the publication and it can even summarize it for you. Anomaly detection is also something very important, particularly for fraud and finance, but in statistics also, if we can detect anomaly in national accounts or in a system of economic environmental accounting, it will be very useful for us. Then you can do personalized recommendation. 
and the economic policy simulation. As I have mentioned it before, once the IA has really learned to link the economic narrative of a country with the economic tables of a country, you can give it a new narrative and say, please tell me which economic tables are are linked to this narrative so it can generate it and this is very powerful i think it is going to change the way we do modeling in economy because now we are not only inputting tables that are structured but now we have the capacity to input text and structure text image and video and then it is going to be digitalized and then it will go also into the economic model so there is really a lot of potential here now another thing that we are going to use is what we call a knowledge graph so knowledge graph basically are one way of representing knowledge and how things relate to each other. So for example, when we are talking about people, you can say a person is part of this, he is born in this country, he came from this country, in his network there is this person and so on and so on. So you have some nodes and then you have some relation between the nodes and the edge have some properties. And this is a very powerful way of representing knowledge it is more powerful than representing knowledge with simple table like statistical table. And it is also easier to read than when you put a narrative. Text narrative, of course, can be very rich, but it's uh, easier to read in the form of a knowledge graph. And this thing is very useful. Google have started using it uh, a few years ago to improve the Google search. That's why you will see that when you make a search in Google, it will find the result very fast. Because when you are asking for a dog it knows that the dog is an animal it will use a knowledge graph and know that these are uh, categories of dog or these are subcategories and then it will use it to improve your search so that you have relevant document so knowledge graph are a very powerful concept that we are trying to use also and for some economic and statistical application of knowledge graph there are many of them as i'm saying but a few are data harmonization when you have data from different databases, you can use knowledge graph to try to join them and try to see which one is related to which. We can take, for example, the survey. When you have one economic survey and you have a second economic survey later, but you don't know how to link the different subjects in the survey, you can use knowledge graph to do this kind of linking. We call it data linkage. You can also manage data from different domains. So you can link the economic domain to the statistical domain to the environmental domain, because if each of them is a graph and then you can match the graph. You can do some trend analysis, which is very important. You can do some causal relationships. So if you are trying to see if it's a theory of change that you are building, you can build a graph that tells you when you do this, it leads to this. When you do this, it leads to this. And you will put all this in a knowledge graph and then you can use some algorithm to simulate some scenario and saying, okay, so if I do ABC as policy, what is going to happen to my economy? It is going to follow the knowledge graph. So you can use it to do some scenario analysis and some very advanced queries. So there are lots of application of knowledge graph and it's a very powerful topic in data science. Then the third thing that we have mentioned is what we call retrieval augmented generation. So when we say retrieval augmented uh, generation, uh, when we say retrieval augmented generation, what we are meaning is uh, how you can take some knowledge, very specific domain knowledge, and input it in a, something like ChatGPT. For example, when you have the first version of ChatGPT, it was trained on all the knowledge that is on the internet. So you ask it a question, when was born this person, it is going to look at the knowledge that it has, and then it is going to give you the answer based on the knowledge. And there are two problems with this. The first problem is that it has been trained on to 2021. So you cannot ask him something that happened in 2024 because it is not in the knowledge of this uh, chat GPT. Of course, it has been updated, but generally, once you have trained a model, you cannot add knowledge that is beyond this point where you have trained it. So this is one problem. And the second problem, people have mentioned it a lot, is a problem of hallucination. Because a large language model is a trend to answer a question when it doesn't have the answer, sometimes it is just going to build something that is very likely, but that is not true. So the idea of retrieval augmented generation is to constrain the knowledge of this model so that it is not going to 
such as the answer. When I ask it, what are the best economic policies for this country? It is not going to look into its knowledge on the internet. It is only going to look at the publication of ECA. It is going to look at knowledge in the publication of ECA. It will try to find the rest answer in this publication. And then it is going to tell you, based on the publication of ECA, we recommend A, B, C, D. So the importance is that here, we are specifically giving the knowledge that was produced by ECA. We are not mixing it with external knowledge that is not verified, that is doubtful. So you see, it makes it very powerful. And you can put it on a website, for example, to make queries. Rather than going to look at the publication, browsing, searching, you can ask a question which publication talks about this topic and then it will quickly find it. So this is the importance of retrieval of mental generation, which is also very interesting technology and it has a lot of applications like automated report generation. So you can uh, take a lot of documents, thousands and thousands of documents, and then you can ask it based on this document please produce a report focusing on A, B, C, and D. This you can do nowadays. You can also do statistical summaries. So I give it statistical finding, and then you will ask it to summarize it. You can do some trend analysis because it can identify economic trend and retrieve historical data, uh, inflation rate, and so on. So it can also do it for you when you give it the knowledge. The idea is that you are giving it a specific knowledge and you want it to answer your question based on this knowledge only. So you can also do custom data retrieval, scenario planning, and most importantly, you can do interactive learning. This is what you want to demonstrate here. Because once you have a course, you are trying to give people knowledge on a given domain, you have a course, you can have a retrieval augmented generation system when the student asks a question, it is going to answer only based on the course content. So this is very powerful, and we are going to demonstrate how it works. So the, what we have tried to do is to apply these techniques to what we call a IE assisted training on system of national account and environmental economic accounting. You know how environmental economic accounting is a very complex topic because there are so many domains that you have to link. You have to link the environment, the economy, the social, and so on and so on. There are very complex uh, topics here that you need to link, and it's not easy to master all these different concepts. So we were thinking, how can we use artificial intelligence to make it easier for people to ask questions on training on the system and economic and environmental accounting and then to find automatic response like a tutor. But this is not really a tutor, it is an artificial intelligence. This is what we have designed. And as I mentioned before, knowledge graph are very important. So we try to build it based on a knowledge graph. So here, the knowledge graph is a set of concepts. You see here on the right side, some concept of uh, economic and environmental accounting. And then you have some different arrows that link this concept. For example, you will see that here, the environment is linked to assets because environment is an asset. You will see an arrow between environment and uh, society and the economy. So it means environment is related to society and the economy. You will see natural capital, for example, has to be maintained, natural capital has to be managed. So each of these arrow is a piece of knowledge. And they are nicely put together in a graph that you navigate so that when you are talking about the concept, you can have related concepts that you can navigate so that you can expand your knowledge. So this is how we try to do it. So for example, the one the course of biodiversity is impacted by habitat destruction. This is a statement that you have in the course. But this statement, you can make it a relation between biodiversity and habitat. So there is a relation between biodiversity and habitat. And what is the nature of this relation? One is impacting the other. So this is the kind of concept that I know that is capable of uh, uh, learning and representing. So the web, the main page of this uh, application is here. So you will see where there is a box where you can ask a question here. You are going to ask a question, and when you will ask your question, it is going to use a retrieval augmented generation to go and find answer on this uh, to this question in the course, only in the course content. It's going to give you the answer on the course content. 
but at the same time, because it is an AI generated answer, people might not trust it. So we are also using some questions that are generated by ECA expert and where we have given the answer by the expert. And then we are going to try to link your question to questions that are already answered by the ECA expert. So you will also see some answer generated by ECA that you can trust more than something that is generated by AI. So here you will see how it works. On the left, you have this uh, graph. You can expand it or we can reduce it. Expanding it means the links that are very strong, you can keep them or the links that are weak, you can remove them depending on the information, the quantity of the information to make the graph more readable. But this, uh, we will see it in the application. Another important uh, feature of this application is once you have a node, for example, natural capital accounting, you can hover on the node, and then it is going to tell you all the relation of this concept. You are looking at the concept of natural capital accounting, you see it is telling you that natural capital accounting integrates biodiversity, natural capital accounting integrates clean water, natural capital accounting integrates productive soil. So all the knowledge that it has built in the knowledge graph, it is going to give you it for natural capital accounting. What, uh, what, do, what do you know about natural capital accounting in your knowledge graph? It is going to show it to you. And this is very interesting for someone who is trying to learn system of economic and environmental accounting because you can jump from one concept to another concept, try to learn this concept, then you will jump to another concept, and it makes the learning much easier for you. So the application is also uh, interactive. Interactive means you have the questions that you can ask. You are not constrained to a set of questions. You can ask any questions that you want. You get the answer. You can also put case studies. When there is some knowledge that is not in the application, maybe you have a specific experience on your country, you can feed it here so that someone, someone asks, how do I do this? The application is going to say, based on the experience of country ABC, this is how they have solved the problem. So this makes the application even uh, more and more powerful. So the key importance or the key things that make it very interesting is uh, personalized learning because you are navigating based on your own knowledge. So everyone has a unique experience because it's like a journey. You have many passes like you going to this and parks whether at teams, you can choose the trajectory that you want to follow. You are not constrained by a trajectory. You can choose based on what you already know. You have also some immediate feedback. You have some interaction. And then you have comprehensive access because you have a lot of knowledge that you can put there and you can contribute to your own knowledge. And finally, it gives you some data-driven insights that will help you. It will learn, for example, the pattern, what is easier for you, what is difficult for you. It can guide you. So this is uh, what we would like to do. So we would like to use this artificial intelligence to shape the future of learning of system of economic and environmental accounting, and also for the system of national accounting. And later on, we can extend it to any statistical learning or any economic knowledge. We can build uh, something like that so that people can learn. So now let's just do a demonstration of the application. I'm going to, let me try to disconnect and uh, see if I can connect to the real application. Are you seeing my, are you seeing my screen? No, not yet. So do you see here? Yeah, now we can see it. Uh, okay, so this is a prototype of the application. It is not completely working, so maybe there will be some bugs. You should expect some bugs, but we can still try it. I have launched it today. For example, uh, you can ask a question related to the system of environmental accounting.
So I'm simulating here a student who would like to know what are the main tables that the system of economic and environmental and accounting is uh, recommending to produce. So let's do that. So what are the main accounts that I'm going to put here under? So when you will see here, it is running. It means the application is trying to retrieve the knowledge. And then it is still running. So you see the first thing that you get is an answer to your question here. The system of environmental economic accounting recommends the production of several tables to facilitate a comprehensive analysis of environmental and economic uh, uh, interactions. So it is giving you one of the key tables is the asset account. Another important table is the physical flow account. Additionally, the SEEA recommends the production of ecosystem service account. So you see, it is going into the documents and trying to find the best answer to the questions, and it's going to put it together and generate an answer that you can understand. That in addition to that, as I told you, when you ask a question, we are also going to look at the questions that were already answered by ECA expert and see if your questions are very close, semantically close. So for example, how does SAA central framework make it easier to create statistical publications that focus on specific topic? This is a question that is in our knowledge base that was answered by ECA expert, and it is similar to your question. So you are shown also this question and the answer that was given by the ECA expert. And here, how does SAA makes it easier to create tables that track the physical movement of wood? You have the answer. So here you have a list of questions that are similar to your question and the answer that was given by the EC expert. So that you are now going to say it is not a reliable answer because it's an artificial intelligence. These answers are answered by people who are experts of national account. Then I mentioned not the knowledge graph. So you see, this is what I call the knowledge graph. Based on the answer here, it is going to look at the different concepts that are contained in the answer, and this is going to build only the part of knowledge graph that shows you this concept. So you see here, there are so many nodes that it makes it a little difficult to understand. So you can break the link by reducing the threshold. So what does it say here? Natural capital accounting, is linked to decision making. Natural capital accounting is linked to ecosystem services. And when you browse on ecosystem services, as I told you, it is going to give you the knowledge that it has on ecosystem services in the form of relations. So what do we see as a relation? For example, ecosystem services is related to ecosystem accounting. Ecosystem services are monetary assets. Ecosystem services are thematic spaces. Okay, I think it's the opposite. Ecosystem services provide clean water and so on and so on. So you see there is a wealth of knowledge here that has been extracted from the course that is given to you here in a knowledge graph that is interactive. So you see you can move the graph to look at more concepts that are useful. You see health ecosystems. Health ecosystems are daily needs, benefits of biodiversity. Essential benefit of vulnerable population. So you have all these concepts that are in our knowledge graph that are linked to one another. And then you can navigate. So maybe when you arrive here, we have already seen ecosystem services, monetary asset, clean water, for example, clean water. Biodiversity provides clean water. Healthy ecosystem provide clean water. Clean water is provided is impacted by pollution. So you see all this knowledge is here in a way that you can easily navigate it. And when you navigate to another concept and you have a question, for example, here we are saying that clean water is impacted by pollution. Maybe I would like to know how those pollution impact clean water because it's a follow-up question from what I have seen from the graph. Okay, so here all I have are uh, questions that are similar. 
that were answered by the ECA expert. So here, what is the significance of a quantum of the emission substance to water resources and the release on the same substance? Okay. Then I have the knowledge graph, but let me make the question. Uh, clear air, maybe. In. And the clean water. Because it is a design in a way that if it doesn't really find an answer that is very significant, it just doesn't answer anything. And the reason is that we don't want to the system to hallucinate. We don't want the system to hallucinate and take knowledge that is not in the course and give it to you. So if it doesn't find the answer, it is going to put nothing as a way of making sure that this is not hallucinating. Normally, if you are asking a normal large language model, it is always going to give you an answer. But this one specifically, if you don't find the answer in the course, don't give an answer because you don't want hallucinations. This is why it's not always that you have the answer. So, for example, how is pollution treated in the system of economic and environmental accounting? You have the answer here, a very extensive answer, and you have also a similar question. And as usual, you have your knowledge graph. The knowledge graph is always built on the content of the answer. So we look at the concepts that are in the answer and we look at the concepts that are closed. So we are still finding here pollution. We are talking about pollution. What are the different relations with pollution? You see, link with over exploitation leading to pollution. Economic decision. What is the relation between economic decision and pollution? Economic decision have an impact on ecosystem services. Economic decision, natural capital contributes to economic decision. And we have here, economic decision can result in pollution. Economic decision and related to pollution. So this is uh, how we have developed the application. As you see, the knowledge gap is a very powerful tool that you can use to navigate and then uh, we are planning to improve the application so that you will have a, it will be easier to navigate. Maybe when you click on something here, it can suggest some further question if you want to explore further and so on and so on. And also here, when we are going to propose a question that were answered by the ECA expert, we can make them in a way that you can select a question, you will have an answer and you will have the associated knowledge graph. So this is roughly the application that uh, we are trying to present and that we want to discuss with you how useful you think it is in terms of learning. Ah, sorry. And uh, we want also to know if you have similar applications that you are trying, you are using knowledge graph, uh, retrieval augmented generation and artificial intelligence to facilitate training. And most importantly, how do you see the future of training in the national account? system of economic and environmental accounting or even in economy in general how do you see the future with artificial intelligence so will you trust an artificial intelligence tutor or do you think that uh, there's no way you can replace human with an artificial intelligence tutor so all these are very open questions now for the other part uh, I don't think we will have time to expose it here. Maybe when we will do another webinar, we are going to expose in very detail how we are using uh, artificial intelligence to extract some tables from text. And another where we are going to show how we are using artificial intelligence to query the website of a national statistic office. So that instead of going to the website and trying to navigate where you will find the consumer price index, there is just a box where you are going to ask your question. 
when was the last data for consumer price and that uh, published on this website this is going to tell you the last data were for uh, may 2024 they were published on this date and this is a link where you can access the data so that you have an interactive way of uh, talking with the website instead of navigating now you are just discussing with the website and we want to use it also for the knowledge of products of ECA. Instead of navigating the different documents, you will just ask questions. So you are not navigating the website, you are just having a conversation with a friend or an expert. You are asking it questions. Did ECA do some work on uh, cross board trade? It will tell you yes. If it did it, what, when was the latest? What are the recommendations? And so on and so on. So it makes it easier using retrieval of mental generation to have this kind of conversation with. Uh, any kind of knowledge, any kind of knowledge that you have, you can have an easy conversation with the knowledge and build some very powerful knowledge graph that you can use to navigate. So I think I will stop here and then we can go through the discussions and questions over to you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Yusufu, for this uh, very enlightening and uh, comprehensive presentation. This really educated us on how generative AI can be used in our daily work, such as in uh, analysis, reporting, and, uh, and so on, and how the retrieval augmented generation can be applied in our field of economic and uh, statistics. Uh, generally, in this presentation, we explored the dynamic field uh, of knowledge graphs, their transformative application across various domains. We delve into the fundamental of knowledge graphs and their key benefits, followed by an, uh, a, an introduction on the retrieval augmented generation technology. We thank you also for sharing us some practical use case that you have conducted so far at ECA where you told us about the advantage of uh, retrieval augmented generation, particularly in its role in generating knowledge uh, graphs. This uh, presentation included real world examples and case studies, emphasizing on how ECA utilized uh, the, the retrieval uh, augmented <clears throat> and knowledge graphs for training in the SNA uh, system of the national accounts and uh, in the system of environmental economic accounting. We showcased uh, also the AI-based CAA course tutor, including its current uh, limitation and the potential improvement. So thank you for taking your time for educating us. I see that we have some question already in the chat box. And uh, now uh, we will start in the chat with the chat and you are welcome to raise uh, your hand to indicate that you like would like to speak. Uh, I will just uh, read, uh, go through some question and uh, will the presenter, Mr. Yusufu, you will be uh, addressing them. Uh, the first question I can say is uh, the question from someone from Madagascar, Mami. Uh, she was asking if they can have uh, the app. Uh, the second question was, uh, what is the language supported on the app? What the language was used? And uh, the third question was for Minado. He asked, how does one improve on the answers provided by the app? For example, what if ECA has found better answers to improve the trained data? Can you retrain the model or what? Uh, maybe you can, uh, you may respond to this and then we, we continue with other questions. Okay, thank you. So the first question is, can we have the application? It's still a prototype, but we have produced a version that we have put online for testing a few months ago, but now it's not live anymore. But we we can put it online. We can put it online and then people can test it. Or if you want to, even for ACS to develop specific application for you, this one I was running it on my computer. You can also put the calls on your computer so that you can run it locally. So there's yeah, a possibility is there, but when we finish testing it and it will be very stable, then we were planning to help the National Statistical Office in particular because there's a, those ones we support, but 
even other entities, if they want to develop this kind of uh, training tutor, we should be able to help them develop it locally or put it online. So this is a question. Now the second question is about the language that was used. I'm not sure uh, if you mean the I think you know that uh, machine learning is done in Python, mostly. Machine learning mostly is done in Python. So here we have developing it in Python, but we are using an application that you call Streamlit. So if you search it, you will see that you have Streamlit that allow you to produce interactive applications. And then we are also using retrieval of mental generations, so where we are taking some documents and putting it in what you call a vector store. Then when you have a question, you are going to compare the question to the vector store and find the most relevant as well. But it will be very technical. Maybe later we'll be able to explain exactly how we have produced it with some technical documentation. That for the language mostly is Python. Now for the improving the answer, this is one of the benefits of the retrieval augmented generation. As I told you, the model, when you ask a question, the model is going to look at the knowledge and extract the answer from the knowledge. So every time you ask, did the knowledge base, the answer are improved. So you don't really need to worry about it. So when you have the knowledge base, it's more complete. For example, you have asked a question today, it goes into the knowledge base, it doesn't find a good answer. But tomorrow we are going to build new documents. The knowledge base is richer, and this time you will ask the same question, and you will see that this time it is able to find the answer. So it's, a, it's almost automatic process. When your knowledge base is answered, the answers are also automatically answered. So it's a building pro. It's a building feature. Over to you, Thank you. Uh, the next question is from uh, Akiza Sel. He's uh, asking uh, some note. Uh, he's saying that uh, some note have higher size compared to others. What is the rationale behind? Why does uh, the color of the nodes what the, what does the color of the nodes means in terms of relationship? He's Celestine from Rwanda. Uh, another question is from Robert. Uh, he's thanking you for an informative uh, presentation. He was asking. Uh, uh, you you gave an example that in generative AI you can ask it uh, a, to generate a supply and use a table of a country. Hope I got it well. I'm interested on how that is done. I wanted to know how uh, you can generate a supply and use table depending on the country. Yes, that's the question we have so far in the chat box. Maybe. Uh okay so concerning the size of the nodes uh, we have designed it in such a way that when a topic is very important uh, the node is bigger and how do we assess the importance of a topic by the number of times that you see it in the document so when something is said 100 times in the document it is probably more important than something that is mentioned like uh, three or six times. So the size of the node is based on this number of times the topic is mentioned in the document, which gives us a relative importance. Now for the color, we didn't really quote the color. I think the color should be random now, but later on we will try to have color code that are meaningful because it still makes the learning experience much more easier. But for the time being, the color are really just random colors to make it nice. Now concerning the supply and use tables, we don't, uh, this is still at the step of research. As I told you, generative AI, there are many categories of generative AI, and we have some generative AI that are specific for statistical tables. So they have the capacity to learn statistical tables and to generate statistical tables. We have some of these that we are experimenting, we are trying to understand. And once we have learned this, then we can use them to generate supply and use the table because SUT are just a specific case of statistical table. So for now, what we can uh, give as a list of generative AI that are specialized in producing statistical tables in general. But later on, we are going to work and train one specifically on supply and use table. Then we'll have that application that generates statistical tables that we are going to share with uh, member countries, hoping that it will be very useful. 
Oh, about the Yeah, the, there is another question also regarding uh, if uh, there will be technical trainings to NSOs about building their own generative AI and uh, integrating them in their system. If yes, when are you planning to for this to happen? This is from Denise. Okay, I think some questions are also for uh, our ACS colleagues who are here because we have been doing this work together and they have been supporting it and presenting it. So if there's uh, anyone, I don't know if the director is here, he can also add on the technical capacity building. But for the time being, as I told you, it's a prototype. We are running a project. We are running a project that we call uh, using artificial intelligence and machine learning to try to improve the production of national account. And as part of the project, we hope that we'll have uh, a fully working application that we are going to deploy. So what we are planning to do is to see how we can use these techniques to improve the business register. I told you that there is always problem linking the business register. When you do an enterprise survey and then you have the business register, linking the different elements sometimes is very difficult because you need to um, read the description of this company, read the description here, try to see if it is the same. And artificial intelligence can do this linking very smartly. So we are going to see how we can use this uh, artificial intelligence to facilitate the improvement of business register by linking it with other surveys so that it is be more exhaustive. We are also going to see how we can use this artificial intelligence to improve the production of supply use table. One very simple example is when you are trying to now cast the and also there, when you are producing a supply and use table for 2024, Sometimes the survey data that you have is from 2021 or 2022, and you need to update this information before using it. This also will see how we can use artificial intelligence to facilitate this updating. Another issue is the production of national account from uh, sources. You know, national account is a description of the full economy. And because it is a description of the full economy, you are taking data from all sources out for surveys, administrative data, finance, central bank, and so on. And these data are very disparate and you need to integrate them. And this is somewhere where knowledge graph can be very powerful. We can see how we can use this knowledge graph and generative AI to facilitate the reconciliation of the data in national account so that it makes life easier for national account. So these are some some ideas we have even more ideas that we are trying to experiment like also using uh, image because now now that is artificial intelligence can analyze image maybe you can use image also to build statistics when you want to see the growth of economic activity on a market maybe you can use an artificial intelligence to try to count the number of people that you see during the day or when you are trying to see the cross-border trade, if you have some cameras, maybe you can count the number of people passing, you can count the number of vehicles, and use this statistic to improve. So we have all these applications that we would like to do. As I told you, it's a very promising area. We have, there are a lot of things that we want to do, and we are not that many. We are not that many, so it would be good if we can partner with countries that are very interested. Those who are very nice applications so that we can do it together. About you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Isufo. Uh, that was the question we had. I don't know if we have uh, anyone with uh, any comments or to share an experience from their country on how they have used uh, the, the generative AI or any perspective. perspective. Uh, but uh, you haven't addressed yet uh, the technical tra uh, the part on the tra technical trainings. Uh, sorry. You haven't responded on the about the training training some NSOs on how they can use uh, if the, you plan to provide some capacity building on that. Uh, yes, 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 we will do it, but not at this stage. Maybe when we will be very advanced in the development of the application, we will try to test it to some countries, to some pilot countries, and then when it will work, then we are going to train the other countries. 
are trying to partner with very different providers of artificial intelligence tools so that you can develop application and then we are going to train the countries. So yes, if some countries are interested in training, they can write to the African Center of Statistics and we are going to see what is feasible. Uh, thank you. Uh, I see that there is no other question or comment. Thank you all for your participation, your questions, and showing the interest on this uh, topic. Uh, I, I believe that uh, this session of Start Talks has opened your mind towards the potential of generative AI for economics and statistics. As we have seen with the examples showcased, we are just uh, scratching the surface of what can be done with uh, the Gen AI. Uh, therefore, I take this opportunity to encourage all of you to think on how you can experiment additional uh, potential application of uh, gen generative AI. Uh, to have a nice record of this moment, I invite you, everyone, the participants, together with the organizer, to have uh, your cameras on so that we can take uh, a group picture. Your cameras will be enabled. Our team uh, will take uh, some screenshot for to witness that we have attended this uh, this uh, webinar. I invite you all of you to open your cameras so that we can have uh, a picture. Uh, yeah, the organizer can enable the the cameras from the side for the participant. Isufu, maybe you can stop sharing for a moment, please. Thank you, the team will indicate us what's done. Just one more. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, as we conclude, I would like to thank our speaker, Mr. Yusuf Senda, for this very insightful presentation. Thank you. Uh, we would like to hear back from you. Uh, we give us uh, your feedback by kindly responding on our short uh, uh, evaluation form that will be shared in the chat box. Even on the email, you will see a link where you can provide uh, the evaluation. You can evaluate uh, this. Thank you all for being with us today. That's where we conclude our webinar. Uh, we will see you in the next uh, webinar. We will be communicated the time. Thank you.